What's up guys, Ed Quarters here, and today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. This is Love, Money, Rock and Roll. And it's from Soviet Games, a Russian game studio, and it's set, surprisingly I know for a visual novel, in Japan. Soviet Games are the developers of Everlasting Summer, which I haven't checked out, but I've heard is good. It's a free visual novel over on Steam. And this game has currently got a Kickstarter campaign, and this is the demo from Itch. So should we dive right in, shall we? New game. Dead of May, 1987. Oh, cherry blossom falling, so Japan. Sakura is Japanese cherry blossom. These falling Sakura petals. Yes, the fragility of beauty. Does anyone actually find them beautiful? Well, bef before they go rotten. On. Does anyone actually find meaning in how they twirl around? Maybe it's the colours. The purple velvet against the setting sun that we find mesmerising. Maybe it is. Or maybe that's... It's the pipey music in the background that makes us feel mesmerised. There's probably some guy just stood behind us playing some pipes with a little lamp. It's probably a bit weird, but whatever. Back then, looking at the falling petals, I probably used to believe that as well. I think too much time has passed. I have forgotten and I have changed. Only the trees are still the same. It's not like they care. They were born before I was, and they will outlive my descendants. Getting a bit of a mordant feel here, a bit fatalistic. Hopefully we don't, like, commit suicide right at the start, that'd be a bit sad. They don't mind. They don't care about the beauty of the falling petal, its velocity, tilt or vector. It's got a lovely turn of phrase, this. I'm wondering if... It's the Russians themselves who have translated this, or a fan? Because I, I think they're teams from all over the world, so it's conceivable. It's quite nice, quite poetic, like it. Always good in a visual novel to, to enjoy reading it. Why would they care about such trivialities? For them, this is merely a routine change of seasons. But for me, it's a flood of memories. Ah, back when I was a child, rolling about in the... Oh, the tree in front of me looks identical to how it did back then. The day I had to do something, and the day it was too late to do anything. It looked the same. The petals were falling the same way, with treacherous indifference. After all, they really didn't care. They don't give a damn whether some photographer will turn pictures of them into an entire exhibit, or whether some loving couple will perhaps fall even deeper in love after basking in their eternal dance. See, I like the main character. He's a cynic. Oh, and by the way, male character, it's a man. Bit different for a Tome. So it's not a Tome, probably. I don't know. Someone will probably correct me in the comments, and thank you for that. But that's how nature is. That's not how I am. Just like on that day, one year ago, the petals were falling back then as well. And back then, nature was also, no, not dying, but falling asleep, so that come spring it could kindle its flame, the flame of life, and you. Sitting under this tree, I remember. I remember all the happiness. I remember all the sadness. Do you really love me? Girl. We don't, we don't know her name. Me, yes. Girl, really? Yes. She turned away, yet the petals kept falling, tangling themselves in her hair and making her even more beautiful. Broken heart, that's what we've got. You know, Sakura petals look good on you. Oh, we're smooth. She turned around, probably without wanting to. She was probably waiting for something more. A flick of the hair, a touch of the cheek. Now, a charming phrase, some clever words, anything but this. Really? Yes, of course. She smiled. I was probably waiting for something else too. Feelings, confessions, as beautiful as a fluttering petal. Back then, those words were more important to me than anything else. More important than that tree, more important than that moment, more important than life. I finally understood that those words were much like those petals, 
but resting in my hands instead of falling on the ground. So close, so fragile, so precious. I did love the background there, that was really pretty. 12th of June, 1987. So it was May before, wasn't it? Yes, it was May. I woke up. Now I was saying about the environment there, the cherry tree with the moving blossom was really lovely and obviously they want to open the game with something strong, much like the first episode of any anime. The animation's always really top notch to draw you in and then it might get a little bit worse. Or so I've heard. But this design looks lovely. I haven't played that many Otome games, visual novels of this sort, so I'm not an expert. But it seems really nicely done. I mean, I've played... What have I played? Hatful Boyfriend. You know, your standard... <laughs> standard... Spurred Otome game. And I've played sort of Dino Dearest and some of those smaller ones. But this is uh, above and beyond those, isn't it? As usual, the fan was humming detestably. Its noise was probably what woke me up. It was a necessary evil. In this summer heat, not even open doors would do. It was 3am, and the silence was hideous. Dear God, give me anything. A police siren, some noisy drunk neighbours, or the screeching wheels of a speeding car. Anything but this detestable hum of a fan. Who else hates fans at 3am? Yeah. I would have turned it off long ago if it didn't mean letting this heat cook me alive. Yeah, summer in Japan is far worse than winter in Russia. Well, I think, honestly, they're both quite bad. You want to move to England, mate, where it's just sort of mild and drizzly? Mild and drizzly all year. It's fantastic. Oh, that looks nice. With some effort, I got up and went to the kitchen to get some water. Although, what is winter in Russia like? S snowy and cold. The floorboards creaked softly under my feet. The rest of the house, three bedrooms and a living room if we don't count the pantries and the bathroom, was sound asleep, not paying any mind to its single inhabitant. Big house. It was 3am on the dot. I gulped the water down greedily, spilling most of it over myself. <laughs> well, us. <laughs> what are we like, eh? So, tomorrow I have to go to school. Don't want to spill water down yourself there. That will lead to many embarrassing moments. People will be like, have you wet yourself? On your chest? Have you got a chest penis? And you'll be like, no, I just spilt water down there. Actually, do I really have to? Says who? Maybe I was the one to come up with these dumb responsibilities and duties for myself. This, this need to communicate with people and to await the day when I'll be given a useless sheet of paper showing me to be in possession of an average intelligence. University degree, ho! Oh. I probably made up this world as well. I made it up alongside all the other worlds I have to make up every day. For myself, for the people I know, and for the whole world. I have to adapt to the stupid conditions, to the stupid conditions of one of these worlds, that one that, by great misfortune, is considered real by most people. Sucks, buddy, doesn't it? I poured myself another glass of water and headed back to bed. The moon was shining brightly, highlighting every mote of dust. In its almost mournful light, my room looked completely unlike itself, like a portal to another world. A world that even I couldn't make up. The silver light fell on the desk, slowly crawling towards the pile of papers. Class notes, an unfinished novel, letters. From mum, from friends in Russia. And... I stood up and put the heap of papers away into a drawer. We had a love letter from the girl under the cherry tree in May who left us cause we said she looked good with cherries in her hair, cherry petals in her hair. She didn't like that. She wanted us to propose. I don't know how old we are. What would, would we propose? Has it been a year since it arrived? Or, oh, no, maybe it wasn't. Why do I even have to care? On the other hand, why was it lying on the table in the first place? I should have thrown it out a long time ago. I leapt up, took a step towards the desk, and froze. B but how? I've already tried, more than once. The telephone rang loudly. 
Very loudly. Yeah, it's 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., who could possibly need a miserable student mired in self-reflection at this hour? Well, I'm, I'm used to it. Oh, nice hallway there. I'm loving this little guy. He's cute. That's a nice picture. Uh, some umbrellas. Hello? Hello? Are you awake? What do you think? Well, could be sleep talking. I just wanted to hang up and disconnect the phone, but not as much as I wanted her to be here right now, next to me. Why are you awake? How should I know? Probably because you've called me? She muttered something inaudible. How are things, anyway? How are they supposed to be at 3am? Anyway. Well, I don't know. Perfect! Yeah. I, I love 3am. It's, it's the best. Then they're perfect. Don't mock me. What did you want to hear? I wanted... I mean... Just to call... You like each other. You mean it's normal to call someone at 3am? I saw that your kitchen light was on, so I knew you weren't asleep. Oh, we've got ourselves a stalker here, ladies and gents. She's... Or a neighbour. Stalker or neighbour. Are you spying on me? No, I just... Well... The receiver fell silent for a few moments. She was probably thinking up something that didn't sound too silly. I'm in your house. It's, it's probably... In the, I just couldn't sleep either. That's, that's what it is. Why either? What if I was asleep? But you're not asleep. She is the best logician of any of my friends. She can argue her way out of a wet paper bag. Alright, let's try this again. What do you want? I wanted to know... She stopped mid-sentence as if to gather courage and then continued, this time with confidence. I are you going to be at school tomorrow? What if I will? Then I'll stop by tomorrow morning. Oh, we can walk to school together, lovely. And we'll both be really tired because we've been up at 3am and we probably start really early because it's Japan and they start school really early? I probably should have learned more about Japan before playing this game. Note to self. Learn more about Japan. Thanks, that's just what I needed. It's 3am and you're offering to stop by. When? In three hours? Yeah. Well, yeah, so you won't be late. You know, in that case, I think I'll unfortunately have to decline. Ooh, we're very snooty. You can't keep skipping classes, you'll end up dropping out. And then you won't find a good job, and then... Her predictions of my future were completely off the mark. That's not a big loss. What do you mean, no loss? Don't lock the door tomorrow morning. You have the keys. What does it matter if I lock the door? Oh right, we'll see you tomorrow then. She's got keys to this place? I no longer feel safe. What if she comes in whilst I'm asleep and sniffs my socks? See you. I decided not to argue. Simply didn't feel like it. What would be the point anyway? She'd come and wake me up either way. As is the case almost every day. Why did I ever give her my keys? Because you were hoping for some poon. Well, that was a while ago. About a year ago, I think. Sakura petals were probably falling on that day, too. They're always falling. Jeez. To hell with those petals! Oh, you need to set my alarm clock so that I can wake up before she arrives. And sneak out the back door and run away! It's not all that important. I'm just tired of her waking me up. I'm not only tired, after seeing that familiar face before me each morning, I've gotten too used to it. Maybe I've even become dependent. I certainly couldn't let that happen. If she wanted to come by in the morning, be my guest. But I wouldn't let her wake me up anymore. Right, back to bed we go with our water. Probably quite warm now. Uh, oh, I didn't even know if these were Americanized dates or not. It's either the 8th of September or the 9th of August. 9th of August, probably? Right, so I think that's time for me today, which is nice because we haven't made any real choices, but I'm sure we will in the next one because it's one of those games, isn't it? No, it's only a demo. The final's meant to have like 300,000 lines of dialogue, so I'm expecting a lot more. So I hope you all enjoyed that, and I'm hopefully going to keep this up as a series because I think that'll be quite interesting. 
we'll see how that pans out. But that's all from me for today. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye for now.